what's up guys? You're watching Trent and Heath. Today we're gonna to be resoling a pair of Johnson & Murphy Goodyear welted shoes. As you can see, these things were in very, very bad condition, completely blown through the soles. And this guy wants to go ahead and upgrade uh, to some actual stack leather heels. I'll show that, um, the difference between the heels that are on there and what we're gonna be put, putting on during the process and it'll kind of make it a little bit more sense. Let's get started. All right, so here's what we're looking at. These had actually been resold before, but it's actually starting to separate right here. They did a half sole on these. He's worn all the way through the sole, through the, uh, the actual padding inside, and he's just about ready to break through the sock liner. So this is definitely a good time to get these in. He should have brought them in a long time ago, but hey, it is what it is. The heel blocks with Johnson & Murphy, they're not actual stacked leather. They're basically like pressed paper, um, almost like cardboard. This is the one that came off and was cracked. This is also one we took off of a Johnson & Murphy and you can see it's just like layers and layers of paper. So um, I'm not a big fan of these. You see it just peels off like paper. Um, another thing about it is these things are pretty much gonna split because they put these uh, these giant nails that look like an ingrown hair when you when you finally pull them off. That's usually the result of when you're trying to pull off a heel block from Johnson & Murphy. An actual stack leather, it wouldn't do that. But it's no big deal because we're gonna replace these anyways. All right, now we're just gonna split the, uh, the sole from the welt. And whoever did this last sole, glue the dickens out of this thing. One of the things about uh, Goodyear welted shoes is the strength primarily comes from the stitches from the welt uh, holding the sole on. That's kind of the whole point of a Goodyear welt. You can, the glue is just kind of a secondary thing and a lot of times somebody glues a Goodyear welt so much when you try to take the sole off it can actually damage the welt. You want to be real careful when you cut these things because if your angle is off and you actually go down you're actually going to wind up cutting the stitches a lot of times that will hold the welt done so you just want to barely stick your blade in there just to barely cut those stitches sometimes i'd like to just kind of angle up just to be on the safe side all right so we cut the stitches and pulled the sole off and yeah this thing has been majorly glued All right guys, so here's where we stand on this resole of Johnson & Murphy's. Took the sole off, and a pet peeve of mine is when threads from a former resole, wherever it was done, were not pulled out. Um, and I counted, in this welt, I counted four layers of stitches, and they were all from here, around here. So he had half soles done over and over and over. When a sole is stitched on, the awl comes up uh, on the Landis machine and pokes a hole through the welt, and the sole and the needle comes back down and pulls the thread up. Well, that all is gonna take the, the path of least resistance. And if all the original holes are clogged up with uh, thread, what it's gonna do is gonna punch a new hole. And eventually this turns to Swiss cheese. I'll show you from this direction. And on this side, it just completely blew out. And a lot of times you'll see that especially here at the joints because that's the widest por uh, portion of the uh, foot and it's putting a lot of pressure uh, stretch out but when you've got a weak weld it's gonna it's gonna give way a lot quicker uh, another little side note on the welts with Johnson and Murphy's one of the things that they do that I'm not a big fan of I know there's other people's that uh, other makers and that do it as well they put a very small slice in their welt for the stitches to lay down into it. Um, so you really can't see the stitches on the top. What that does though, is it's cutting the welt in half. Um, and it's, so uh, you're only working with like half the strength of the leather welt. And it's just, I think it weakens the welt. So that's just, you know, a little side note. So um, we're gonna actually have to take this welt off and on both of them, cause I know the other one's gonna be just the same and we're gonna put some new welts on. So you'll actually get a, another view on that. All right, y'all, I'm wearing a different shirt. Um, it's actually the next day when I took that welt off. I wasn't expecting to have to take the welt off when I first got these shoes and I spoke to the customer. 
Um, but anytime I'm going to do something major like that, like re-weld, I like to get back in touch with the customer and just, you know, keep them in the, in the loop. Um, he said that I learned a little bit about these. These were his grandfather's shoes. And so he was all about putting a new welt on them just to keep those things going. Very sentimental to him. So it's a good decision because there wasn't really a whole lot we could do with the welt being busted the way it was. So um, I'm gonna put a new welt on these and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have put the welt on both these shoes now. And um, these rands we could reuse and we've replaced all the cork and now we're just, we're ready to put the sole on. So I'm gonna put some, some glue on this and uh, on our soles that we've already pre-finished. And uh, I like to coat it with at least one coat of wax just to you know give it a little protection during the process. And then um, we'll go through and stitch it. Now let's put these soles on. All right, wardrobe change. Um, it usually does not take us three days to shoot a video, but we're around the holiday and it's been so busy lately. We've been having to shoot these videos like in the last hour that we've been open. So it's taken us a little while to do this one video, but we got the sole stitched on and we're gonna use, um, we had to replace his blocks anyways. And sometimes we make the blocks. Sometimes we actually use pre-made leather blocks that actually is stack leather all the way through. Uh, for these, we're going to use the pre-made. I rough them up because smooth leather on smooth leather a lot of times can cause a squeak and you don't want that. So I rough it up and put a little bit of glue. All right, so we've got our blocks on now. I don't want to nail these yet because I still have to angle our blocks to uh, make room for a top lift so that it'll actually sit flat and not kick up the hill. So I just shoot some little wire nails in there just so if I sand them down, I'm not actually sanding off the nail. And once it's right, then I'll go through and actually put our, our uh, threaded nails in there, so. Okay, so we've got these uh, sanded down and actually plain to the, the height that we need in the front. Um, these temporary tacks serve their purpose, so we're actually gonna put some of these threaded nails in there and that's actually what's gonna hold it. All right, so we've already got these nailed, got these glue, uh, these glued, and we're gonna stick our heels now, and we'll go put these on the press because these things are almost done. All right, y'all, we have put the new soles and heels on, inked in and burnished the sides, and now we just gotta take care of our uppers. Uh, we're gonna go over these things first with a saddle soap, and then we'll go over it with um, polishes and get these things up, put on some new laces and he'll be set. All right, y'all, thanks for joining us as we did this resole on this gentleman's uh, Johnson & Murphy's that belonged to his granddad, so it's got some sentimental value to it, so we were very happy to be able to add some new life to this. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. We're always coming out with new videos, tutorials. Hit the little reminder button so that anything that we come out with will come straight to you. Until next time, thanks for watching Trent and Heath.